So, you're diving in the Atlantic Ocean, and suddenly you realize you haven't seen anyone else around for a while. You come up to the surface, and your boat's gone. No! In the distance, you can see an ocean buoy you can climb onto. You scramble to safety and look out at the open ocean around you. There's nothing but blue in every direction, except something large moving in the water grabs your attention. A dorsal fin breaks to the surface. It's all over! It's a great big sh- Wait a minute. It just rolled onto its side. Oh, it's not a shark at all. You just encountered the heaviest bonefish in the world, the sunfish. It can grow up to 14 feet long, and it lives deep down in the ocean. What you're seeing is the sunfish surfacing. Some people call it the mola mola. It mostly dines on jellyfish and can dive down anywhere from 600 to 2600 feet. It's not sunbathing or anything. It's letting seabirds eat any little bugs that try to get away with a free ride. A delicious meal, I'm sure. Yeah. The sunfish is so large and heavy, it's extremely difficult for scientists to study it, especially when it swims down so deep. The mola mola, just like the jellyfish, is not even a fish. It's a plankton. It's kind of a laid-back creature that drifts with the current rather than swimming against it like normal fish. The sheep's head fish lives around the Gulf of Mexico and off the West Atlantic. It lives quite far down from the surface, and I hope it stays down there. Its teeth help snag its favorite food, shellfish. While it may look scary at first, the sheep's head fish is a regular at fish markets and some restaurants if you're game to try it. I know I wouldn't eat anything with teeth that looked like mine. The world's most misunderstood fish also happens to look like the saddest. The blobfish lives deep down off the coasts of Australia and New Zealand. It's considered one of the strangest creatures ever caught, and for good reason. This fish just isn't made for the surface. It looks like a melting pile of goo with a frown. One thing we know about deep-sea fish is that we don't know anything about what really goes on down there. So, you make it to dry land, and you hear a deep grumbling sound coming from the muddy sand nearby. Some strange eel-like animals are moving around. They might be cute, but picking one up might be a big mistake. They might mistake your finger for a nice mid-afternoon snack. The giant mud skipper lives throughout Southeast Asia and, surprisingly, can outrun a human if needed for a little while at least. They love muddy water, so they mostly hang out near shorelines. What makes these fish unique is that they spend most of their time out of the water. Although they only grow to about one foot long, they can jump about two feet. The walking trees of the Amazon are one of the biggest secrets of the forest. You head over there. These trees aren't walking around with legs like you or me, but they're still able to move about 60 feet every year or two. What happens is that new roots search for sunlight while the old roots leave the soil, one root in front of the other. Their movements are incredibly slow. You won't be able to sit there and watch them strut their stuff. But if you've got nothing but time on your hands, you'll notice the trees shifting week by week, trying to find the best possible light. You're walking in the West African jungle, whistling away. You pick up a small stick to get rid of some spider webs in your path. It's all good until you realize that stick is tickling your hand and bending. Lucky for you, you just picked up a giant African millipede. They grow to about a foot long, so they kind of look like a small snake. That tickling you feel is their 250 legs wiggling around. These millipedes are part of the same family as crabs and spiders, but they only really eat plants and fallen leaves. You pop over to Nevada for a nice walk. Hey, why not? It's way too hot, so you decide to jump into that nice pool of water you just found. The only problem? This place is way off limits, and swimming definitely isn't allowed. Why? Because of what could be the rarest fish in the world, the pupfish. They only grow about an inch long, and they only live here. They're precious and protected fish, so read the signs and don't even think about going swimming anywhere near them. 
The pupfish's backyard pool has another claim to fame. It's an earthquake indicator. When there's an earthquake, say in Indonesia, Japan, or China, waves start popping up right there in Nevada. You wouldn't be wrong for wanting to get your eyes checked if you saw this little guy sniffing around. The star-nosed mole is one of the weirdest creatures anywhere. Each one of the feelers on its nose help the almost blind mole find its food. Its nose is so sensitive, it can feel five times more than a human hand. That's not all. Star-nosed moles are also the world's fastest eaters. Wow, faster than me. They can even smell around for food underwater. Is there anything this mole can't do? Tardigrades, or as they're sometimes called, water bears, are one of the most interesting creatures on the planet, and also the craziest. These microscopic animals are the toughest creatures on Earth. How tough, you ask? Well, you can find them in the deepest parts of the ocean, high up on mountaintops, in volcanoes, rainforests, and even Antarctica. They're also the first animals to survive exposure to outer space. They can sleep for thousands of years without any food or water, and then get up and walk it off like it was nothing. The water bear could rule the planet, if only it was a little bigger. The blue glaucus looks something like out of a sci-fi movie. But no, this little animal is the weird uncle of the sea slug family, and you definitely don't want to pick it up. It blends perfectly into the ocean waves as it floats on the surface. The glaucus's bright shade of blue helps it melt into its background, but that's not what makes it special. Its sting is quite potent and not very pleasant, but the glaucus doesn't even produce its own venom. It just steals it off of other venomous water creatures. Not bad for something that's only an inch long. How about a delicious coconut? You need to regroup after seeing so many weird animals. Luckily, a coconut just fell from that tree. Although, something else fell as well. It seems like this coconut's already got an owner. Coconut crabs find coconuts on the floor and rip off that hairy brown stuff that's all over them. Then they grab the coconut with a claw and climb up a tree. From there, they chuck it down to the ground to open it up. So the crab's up there, and its lunch is down on the ground. No problem! Coconut crabs love to jump from trees and can land unharmed from a 15-foot fall. This is one crab you wouldn't want to try to catch with your hands. The coconut crab's claw is the strongest of all crustaceans. If it can bust through a coconut, hmm, yeah. By now, you've seen your share of crazy, but no one is prepared for the hagfish. This fish looks like an eel, but with one extra superpower, slime. Less than a teaspoon of slime, when combined with water, can multiply up to 10,000 times. Once the hagfish oozes out its slime, nothing can get close. And what if some of the slime gets in its own nose? It learned to sneeze it out. They're also boneless and made entirely out of cartilage. Last one for today, introducing the purple frog. Not a very exciting name, I know. The purple frog is a strange-looking frog species. It looks like it just ate way too much, and it's got a nose like no other. What makes this creature even stranger is that it lives underground, and I don't mean just for a short while. The purple frog only comes out of its hole for two weeks a year. It mainly eats termites it finds underground, so why would it bother coming up to the surface at all?